everybody. Welcome back. It's circle time. I'm introducing myself every <laughs> fucking time. Every time. It's literally still me, Kelsey. Still the same host. Hi, welcome. We have a guest today, and I'm very excited. Everybody say hello. Hi. To Cameron. <laughs> Cameron Rogers. Yeah, you're right. The you're freckled foodie. Is it fre- is it the freckled foodie? Okay, do you is... like, why do you want to be addressed as? I recently Cammy? have a complete identity crisis. No, okay. we've shifted. So I was right. freckled foodie right. when I started, which yes. was like four plus, five years ago, okay. maybe. And I was in the corporate world. So I like wanted it very separate. I was like, that's my alter ego. It's a right. different identity. Okay. Then, and it was all food. So like you never saw my face on my platform. Okay. Since then, it's evolved a lot into more lifestyle, specifically mental health, parenting, all of that stuff and less food. And I understand why people were messaging me. Like it was confusing. It was like, right. wait, you don't really post food anymore. And I was like, yeah. But this whole freckled foodie was this, alter ego that I kind of liked keeping separate. Like if right. I meet people in my community on the street, they're like, freckled foodie. And I love that. Yes. So I'm like, oh, it's like I can connect with them. Totally. But it's still not completely me, if yeah. that makes sense. Yeah. But I signed with new management and we were like rebranding everything. Okay. And to their, they were completely right. They're like, girl, you're not really food anymore. You post food every once in a while, but right. your content has completely evolved. Like, we let's change the handle. It's okay. a little confusing. And I was yeah. like, you're not wrong. So we changed my handle, but I kept my show name, Freckled Foodie and Friends. I love, I love it. Thank you. How do you feel after the rebrand? New era unlocked. No, like, like I am powerful? fully leaning in. Okay. Yeah. Is it the, scary? Is it scary from like people only knowing you as like food? To knowing like well, everything about you? I think there was like this gradual shift because they had already, it had shifted from food to lifestyle before I changed my handle. Okay. So like that had already happened. Right. I was a little little nervous about the handle change just because I was like, I feel like I'm letting go of this thing I've built where that's not true. And I still reference my community as like the FF fam. Right. P- people still will say like, freckle foodie. Yeah. And whatever. Right. But I am fully leaning in and I feel like once once I leaned in and was like, let's go, mm-hmm. a lot has like shifted and changed okay. and I feel like the universe has got me and they're like, all right, let's take off. That's amazing. And here we are. Here we are. Love it. So there are a lot of times here on Circle Time, especially during story time, where we have people calling in and asking about dating. Whether that's talking about meeting new people and putting yourself out there or first dates or whatever it is, we're talking a lot about dating here. And that is why I am so excited to have Match Dating App as a sponsor on Circle Time. I feel like everyone knows someone who has met their person on Match. I know I definitely have. And I just really think you guys should try it. Match believes, as do I, that the most important relationship is with yourself. So in a world where you can choose to do anything or anyone, choose you first because dating someone who knows what they want and won't settle for less is sexy as hell. And Match's latest study of over 5,000 US singles prove it. Listen to this. 87% of singles say it's important for both partners to prioritize mental health and two thirds of young singles are open to therapy. 81% reported that they engage in self-care at least monthly, which is amazing. 53% say they find dating a helpful tool to learn how to be their best self. And nearly 40% of singles say they feel more sexually empowered this year. And I say more power to them. So this just shows that there are tons of people on Match who are actually open to taking care of themselves, you know, so that they can be the best partner in their relationships. And if you do you, you already know that the best relationships show up when you show up for yourself first. There has never been a better time to try Match. Download the Match app today. Well, because I was like trying to find your Instagram. Oh, I'm confusing. Yeah. And I was like the freckled foodie. <laughs> freckled food. Like I was typing in just like a bunch of random shit. And then it was just like, you mean Cameron Rogers? And I was like, yeah. Well, and I do. the account Cameron Rogers is taken by this person. Should we find them? Oh, I've tried. Really? A friend request was sent two years ago. Oh my Still God. hasn't gotten a, like accepted or rejected. No. I've messaged them. They never post. They have like four posts. Okay. And I know that they've had this handle for a long time because yeah. I looked like way back when, when I changed my last name, like after my, like four years ago when I got married. Right. Or three years ago. Four years ago? What year are we in? Four years ago. And 
yeah, they they aren't letting it go, which is fine. So I threw in my middle name, which also confuses people. Okay. All right. Well, yeah. you know, now you know my guys. friends got <laughs> scammed trying to change their Instagram handle. Oh, like trying to buy someone? Like, like he was like, can I have this Instagram? Yeah. And they were like, yeah, send me some money. And he did. Oh, and then they and never let it go. The, yeah, he never got it. Well, you know what? So be what? careful out there. I actually just remembered I was the freckled foodie. Or no, I was freckled foodie NYC first. Oh, okay. And okay. I did find freckled foodie. And I found her Facebook and I found that she had like another account okay. that was like her real name. Yeah. So I was like, hey girl, do you use this account? Like I really, really love it. I see you haven't been active. Right. She's so sweet. She actually still follows me and like she'll sign into my DMs every once in a while. Oh, that's nice. Um, yeah, so she dropped the account and I took over the handle. Okay, that's nice. Yeah. See, women supporting women. Yeah, but also the second I changed my name, I re-got Freckled Foodie to have just as like a non-account okay. because I didn't want someone swooping in there. Right. I feel like I'm getting married and I'm, well, I'm not going to say, I don't, I haven't told anyone okay. when I'm getting married, but I'm getting married and I'm so worried about changing my Instagram. Were you changing your last name? Yes. Okay. But like, it's never going to happen. I've looked, people have taken them mm. and it's, I'm going to just have to keep, I think I'm just going to keep my Instagram as I think it that's is. fine. It's fine. What's your new last name? Well, it's really long. It's going to be collegesic. Okay. Or co. Like, that's what, like, people know it as. But it's never, I'm not going to change it on Instagram, I don't think. Okay. I, you do your own thing, girl. I don't know. We'll figure. I'm too stressed, actually, to think about that. So we're. The whole process sucks. I'm not going to lie to you. Yeah. Changing your name is a bitch and a half. That's what I've heard. It's absolutely abhorrent. Yeah. I don't, I'm scared. Yeah. Like, I'm, the passport. No. Uh, mm. Do you have to go to the DMV? You do. Yes. Ugh, I'm not gonna. It's do that. awful, and I will say the thing that really fucked. Am I allowed to curse? Yes. The thing that fucked me over the most was my global entry. Everything shit. Interesting. Like we, I'd done everything. Okay. And then somehow global entry didn't do it. So then I lost TSA pre-check. I didn't oh, know this until no. we like got our tickets for a no. flight, and I was like, Why don't I have this on? Oh God. Um. Yeah, it's a lot, and of course, it all falls on us ladies. Yeah. Damn. Yeah. Okay, well, I made my husband actually take over Global Entry because I was so fed up. By I don't. The end. I think it's like I'm taking your last name. You can do this task. Yeah, unfortunately, you, know? you have to be there for a lot right, of them. Right, but like, but they can like help. I mean, like set it he up. He set up all my appointments. Yeah, I was yeah, like, yeah. this is yeah. This you is an us thing. We're married now. Yes, exactly. <laughs> this is an us. Task. Yeah. So you have to do things for me now exactly. that we're married, and you're welcome for taking your last name. Yep. It's a prize. Yeah. They're lucky. Do you feel, I'm like interviewing you, sorry. <laughs> no. <laughs> Last question. Okay. Do you feel any sadness over like losing Kreppel? I'm gonna, Is that how you I'm gonna, it? yes. Okay. I'm gonna put, make it part of my middle name. Okay. Got Not it. my whole middle name. I'm keeping my current middle name, tossing that in there and putting it You're my just like giving me all the names. Well, because I, I have to keep my middle name. I kept my middle name. Or I dropped else, my middle name. If I if I if I if I put my current last name as just my middle name, my initials would not be would would not be cute. Got it. So I'm keeping my uh, the L that's in okay. there to to make it all look nice. You know, nice. Yeah. yeah. I kept my middle name and dropped my maiden. Really? Mm -hmm. Did that make you sad? Did no. your parents care? So this is actually so interesting. A lot of people ask me this. Okay. My maiden name was well, like my family name, whatever. Right. But, and my dad's side of the family. Yes. My middle name was actually my mom's maiden That's name. That's my middle name. Okay. Okay. And I am really, really close with my mom's side of the family. Okay. She's one of three girls. I had, there are nine grandchildren in total. Eight of them are girls. We're so fucking close. Like yeah. we have a text thread, Oaks Women. We chat all day long. Yeah. So I feel very connected to Oaks. Okay. I'm not saying I don't feel connected to my maiden name. Right. But I don't have cousins on that side. Yeah. It was less of like an identity for me. And I even gave that Oaks to my son for his middle name. Oh, nice. So okay. I was just like, I'm not dropping that. Yeah. And yeah. did your dad? I actually ended up calling my dad once and I was like, do you care? that I'm dropping Linville? And he was like, no, but thanks for asking. Okay. He was like, no, of course not. Yeah. He's also been with my mom since they were in high school. Oh, wow. And like Oaks for us really represents our family, but also our grandfather, who was like the kindest man that's ever right. walked this right. earth, who passed six, eight years ago. And my dad lost his father when he was six. 
So like my mom's wow. dad was yeah. a very fatherly figure yeah. to him since they've been together for so long. Right. So he similarly is as in love with that man and like yeah. that name and all that it embodies. That's beautiful. So it was never a thing on okay. his end at all. That's great. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's good. Cause no, I, it was great. I've been talking to so many people about this and like I have a friend who's getting married and he and his wife are, or his fiance, they're like merging, merging name. their names. And his mom was like really upset, upset over the whole thing. But it's, <sighs> it doesn't mean, it, it's all up to, like, I think it's so up to just the two of you. It totally is. And it doesn't mean like you're not. Yeah. If we merged, it would have been lingers. So that's not happening. Lingers? <laughs> like Ro- Linville and Rogers, lingers. <laughs> I mean, you could just do like a dash. <laughs> no, I know. But I know. lingers would be like wild. A liger. You should name. The next kid lingers. lingers. My mom actually wanted me to name a child Linville and call them Linny. Okay. And I'm really against it. Yeah. Um, That's understandable. I like the idea of choosing your maiden name as like a first name for a child. Yeah. But it has to be a last name. It has to be a name that works. Like the people whose last name is like Quinn. Yeah. Amazing. It's like, come on. James. I have one that's Bennett, like a friend. Okay. That was the maiden name. And yeah. the daughter's name is Bennett. That's so cu- gorgeous. So cute. Love that. I mean, I can't name my kid Kreppel. No, yeah. My mom Krep- also wanted me to name our child um, Cameron Joseph, which is me and my husband's name. And okay. I was like, mom, do you, you have you processed how fucking weird that is? You could do like, like if my, how- it's literally, what's, what is Britney Spears' sister? Jamie Lynn. It's, that's what it is. And see, that yeah, didn't work out didn't so work well. Out. But you know what? You know who also did something similar? Will Smith and Jada Pinkett. Yeah, their kids' names are Willow and Jaden. That's true. Interesting. It's still weird to me. That's like, still weird. There's other names. Well, you know what I don't love, and I'm sorry for anyone who is like has this. The whole like junior thing to me is really weird. Okay. Because I thought about this recently. Mm-hmm. If I were having sex with my husband and I was saying his name and it's simultaneously my child's name, that would like ruin things or for like me. his dad's name, right? I don't oh, know. That, that, yeah, no, that I don't would like be that a turn off. I feel like I think more the kid thing for me. Like if yeah. it was my kid's name, like if no, I, I wouldn't barf thinking about that. That'd be bad. And I feel like no one talks about that. That is weird, right? Like everyone's Can like, we, oh, what if you yeah. say the name and like they both respond? I'm like, no, what if you're in the bedroom right. talking to your husband and you're right. saying his name and you're now just thinking about your child? That is really disturbing. Yeah. So there are no juniors happening in our household. I don't think, I think we should <laughs> ban juniors after that. After that, that is awful. Eye opening. I know. Oof. Okay. Well, on that note, that is scary. So on circle time, we like I like to do icebreakers with okay. all my guests like we're in school. I love that. But it also helps because we don't know each other Perfect. very well. So we get to learn. <laughs> New friends. New friends do, playing Would You Rather. Ooh. Okay. And these questions are pretty random, okay. honestly. Like, I don't know. I didn't know the vibe. Like, I didn't know if I should how hard I should go. Mm-hmm. So I, they're pretty you like... I think I'd be talking about saying my child's name in a bedroom? Yeah, and if I did, I probably would have <laughs> found some better ones, but it's fine. I know for next time. Yeah. Dirty would you rather is only next time. Okay, are you ready? Yes. And you can like you can give a reason. Okay, like, okay. It, you know, like it doesn't have to be a one word thing. No, I'm all about reasons. Here we go. Would you rather be covered in fur or covered in scales? Fur. Really? Mm, actually, I'd be hot a lot. I didn't mean to As judge. I said, Sorry, I just, oh, right, I right when you gave your answer. I Scales, was... I'm big on texture. Okay. Like I cannot wear uncomfortable clothing. Okay. And I feel like scales would be uncomfortable to touch. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like I, growing up, my mom would try to like put me in these like cute Christmas woolly right. sweaters and I would scream. Okay. Like I wore boys clothes until I was in middle school. Okay. And I just feel like the texture of scales would not be okay for me. But I will say... I also run hot and the fur thing. Like I just something about the fur, like I think I'm still saying with fur. You're gonna stick with yeah, fur. What if it's wool? Fur. Well, is that fur? It's a blend, I guess. Is wool even a blend? I don't know. I don't know what wool is. Our wool, wool and is fur, like cheap, is it not? Yeah. Yeah. But so what who like what has fur? Like a bear? A bear. Yeah. I think I'm sticking with fur. Okay. A dog. Oh my god, if I had like dogs fur, my. my dog's fur is so soft. What kind of dog do you have? He's a rescue, so he's a mutt, but we did that DNA test and it's yeah. like mainly golden retriever. Okay. So he looks like a shepherd and a collie. Chic. And then you'd have like but beautiful he feels luscious. like a golden retriever. Yeah. Okay. 
Yeah. I, I think if if it's your dog's fur, I support it. Yeah, and he had a huge tail glow up because when we got him, he had eaten all the fur off of his tail oh, from fleas. No. And now oh it's God. like luscious as fuck. Yeah. Do you use mane and tail? No. That shampoo. <laughs> <laughs> that horse <more> shampoo. Yeah. <laughs> no. Oh, you could. No, I could. You never know. Yeah, that's true. Okay, next up. Would you rather have one real get out of jail free card? Like you could commit any crime and get out of jail for free. Uh-huh. Or a key that opens any door. A key that opens any door. Same. Yeah, definitely. Like I don't need to. I don't need to. I'm like not yeah. going to commit a crime. Right. I would well, love to open doors. Same. Like, can you imagine? Like you could literally get in anywhere. No, that'd be amazing. Like you could, I could go, finally make my way into the Gramercy Park. <laughs> that yeah <laughs> no that's totally. not what I would use but there is like a key that you have to have to get access right to the park. where would you go what where, what door would you <sighs> want to get into can we go back in time sure there's no rules oh my god I don't know this is hard my brain goes to something like so silly like I would love to like see the inner working of like Justin Timberlake and Britney Spears' relationship no but like a key to a door yeah like a door in their like house. in their house yeah. oh my god i was thinking like i would go into a bar during the day and like see what it looked like with all the lights on no no or like just like a random like warehouse like a like this staple center like i would go into like a concert venue and just be the only one in there okay i where would i want to go i mean no like i would also what about someone like really famous's house like that, just looking inside these houses. Yeah, that's true. And I then, don't know if I'd but then you could also use arena. your get out of jail free card to steal everything because you broken breaking and entering. No, but if you have a key, you're not breaking and entering. But they don't know you, so I feel like there's some. There's well, some, then there's no what. Then where can you enter? The Staples Center. <laughs> there's that doesn't even exist anymore. Fucking crypto is arena. Is that what it's called? Yes, that's sad. It's disgusting. Like why? Why? Yeah, I don't know. Okay. Poor Staples. I actually like your idea better than mine. <laughs> just so you know. Like, I like your answer far more than my own. Okay. So, I think my head was stuck because we were th- talking about, like, Laguna Beach couples and stuff before. I was thinking about what couples I would have loved to, like, see. Yeah. Brittany and Justin kind of scares me. Yeah, but it was, like, my childhood. I think that's why I'm yeah. curious. Yeah. I get, how old are you? Do you uh, mind 31. me asking? Okay. God, no. Okay. I'm pr- so proud of my age. I love it. It's the best year ever. You like being 31? Well, I love being th- like in plus your 30s. 30. Yeah. 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 I'm excited for that. Unlocked the most amazing decade. Yeah. I think you finally like let go of caring about certain things. Yeah. And as do the people in your lives, assuming you're like close to people the same age. Right. And so shit just feels like less trivial. Yeah. That sounds amazing. Yeah. It's great. I'm almost there. Okay. Here we go. Would you rather? Couldn't read there for a second. Would you rather be able to talk to land animals, animals that fly, or animals that live under the water? I mean, I would love to talk to animals under the water because I'm most interested in that. Okay. But I would do anything to be able to speak to my dog. So I have to say land animals okay. solely so I could talk to Charlie. Okay. Like I am fascinated by what happens in his brain. Yeah. And he's such a human. Yeah. Oh my God. Like, Same with mine. Such personality. Like, yeah. Yeah human eyes whenever people are over they're like dude your dog is like a person what right. dog do you have he's like a golden doodle but he's a yeah. he's, he's little okay he's a little one yeah he's a good boy that's very nice yeah Mine's a maniac i mean he's, he's a sour patch kid no i mean he's always like he's not actually a good boy but like <laughs> but he's a good boy him. you yeah, know yeah, yeah. he's no, pretty chill I would love to know what's happening in there. Yeah. Same. But then also like, you know how it's like never meet your heroes. Yeah. What if they're like, I actually fucking hate you. Right. Yeah. I thought about that. It's they're like scary. dog whisperers. Yeah. And I thought about doing it. But yeah. And I was like, what if I find out something I don't like? Exactly. Like I'm mm-hmm. kind of scared of that. I feel like I would talk to like a bear. Well, I just love bears. But I like, saw a bear in person recently. Was it cool? Yeah, it was really cool. Well, I saw one trapped in a zoo like on Sunday yeah, but the, or Saturday, but I was actually on a hike in Jackson Hole and I saw like a full blown, like three bears, very close. Was it scary? I don't know why I was not scared. I don't think I would be scared either. Like my mom was losing her shit when I sent her a photo, yeah. like full panic. Yeah. And I was like, no, it was chill. Yeah, my fiance's parents are from Canada and so they run into bears a lot and they're always like scary encounter today. Yeah. And I'm like, that sounds really cool. And he's always bears. like, it's not cool. It's really scary. And I'm like, okay, well- Maybe that you just don't understand them. Maybe if you could talk to them. Right, exactly. You would You'd know that they're just trying they're to They're misunderstood. Hang. Yeah, they are. 
Okay, couple more. Here we go. Would you rather be unable to use search engines or unable to use social media? Unable to use social media. Same. I would die without search engines. Same. Like I don't know. I I honestly cannot understand how people like lived in a world. Like I think how did about you that figure things out? Time. Did you just like? Did you just like chalk it up to like you don't know? I answer? don't know. And like even then, when I think about like parenting stuff, which that's a whole different ball game because it's also terrifying if yeah. you let yourself spiral in search engines yeah. like during postpartum. Totally. But little things, I don't know what I would have done. Right. Like, I really don't. I, but I will say, I think we used to live in more close vicinity, almost like village type, mm-hmm. where you had other people to assist you and right. you weren't on your own as much. Right. And also so there's so the many things now, engines. I feel like where, that I overthink and like scare myself about yeah. that if I didn't like look into like what would happen if this, this and this happened, like I probably would just like live so much You'd more. You'd be a less anxious person. <laughs> oh my God. Like I can't even imagine. Like ignorance really is yeah. is bliss. Agreed. Also, there wasn't as much, like you weren't doing all of the thing. you know? It yeah. was just simpler times. It was, so maybe you didn't yeah. need to search as much. It's true. I don't know, but I would definitely rather give up social media. Yeah, same. I'm pretty bad at it anyway. I am not good at it, but somehow it's what I do. Same. So it's really confusing. Yeah, me too. Isn't that odd? I think... Like, you've got almost a million followers. You're like, big girl. Well, I don't... It's okay. (laughs) It it is what it is. I don't know. It's just like, it just doesn't... That doesn't... That's just like a number to me, kind of. No, I know. But like, the fact that you think you're not good at it. I like, know. Have but you ever actually really not. thought about how many people that is? Yeah, I actually had a moment yesterday. Like, I even think about it sometimes. And is there a way that you, like, visually, like, for me, I think about how many people were in my college. I, and I, then I multiply. Yeah. I'm like, that, like, that's when it right. really hits me. I'm like, what yeah. the hell? Where did you grow up? New Jersey. Okay. Oh, I was just listening to your podcast and you said that you. The you best guys place are, ever. You want to be trying. back in New Jersey. We're trying, okay. yeah. Where if in New Jersey? If anyone wants to sell me their house in North Jersey, honestly, please. Any um, takers? Inventory is low. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's rough out there. It's rough out so there. So you're in the city. Yeah. So I grew, technically I was born in New York. Okay. I lived there until I was like three or four. In Manhattan. In Manhattan. Mm-hmm. But I have no memories, obviously. Right. From that time. So I say I'm from New Jersey. Mm-hmm. I lived there. We moved to Central Jersey, Princeton. So like right outside the university, like five, 10 minutes away. And grew up there and then moved to New York 10 years ago. Okay. Wow. And you are our first mom guest. Really? Here on Circle Time. Cool. It's so cool. Like I- It is cool. Can you talk a little bit about being a mother? (sighs) I mean, I don't even know where to begin, but like what has been like- something that you didn't know would be a thing Mm -hmm. being a mom and what like is not as much of a thing that you thought would be a thing. Okay. I used to teach preschool. So I I know kids. I've got a lot of questions for you, girl. I know kids pretty well. (laughs) Yeah. I feel like, but like. I have a really smart kid. Yeah. Liam. Yes. He is literally. He loves books. I was. No, he's a bookworm for Halloween. He's a genius. I love that. I'll show you videos when we're done. Okay. I think for me, motherhood, the way that I like the most concisely explain it Mm -hmm. is it has rocked me in the hardest and most wonderful ways in the world. Mm -hmm. And it is the true definition of two conflicting emotions coexisting at once. Because I struggled a lot during postpartum mentally. I had a physically very easy pregnancy Mm -hmm. i did not like being pregnant i was the girl that was always like i can't fucking wait to be pregnant my body craves being pregnant i'm so excited okay yeah i hated it okay so that was a (laughs) wake-up call what did you hate most about it i was sick from i found out i was pregnant like before i even had a missed period okay it was a surprise pregnancy okay and i was sick from like week four to 18 Wow. And I just never comprehended 
that you could feel that way. Yeah. Like, I, I know people are like, oh, morning sickness. It's not morning. Yeah. It's the entire day. Right. And like, I've never felt like when I woke up, I counted down the hours until I went to sleep. Ugh. And I'm not trying to scare anyone at all. Because yeah. not everyone feels this way. Also, right. like some people really love it and they feel great. And also it's different. Kudos to them. Every Everyone time. is so different. But like, ev- like your every next time. pregnancy could be completely different. Yeah. yeah. I say this all the time when you're either speaking or listening to anyone's experience about anything related to this, everyone's fertility, conception, pregnancy, labor and delivery, motherhood, postpartum journey is so different Yeah, from one another and from pregnancy to pregnancy. And that's why I think it's so important to speak your truth on it Mm -hmm. and not pass judgment on others. Totally. Because there was a lot of, you know, I obviously got a lot of messages being like, oh, shut the fuck up. You're so complaining. You chose to be pregnant. You chose to have a kid. I'm like, well, so yeah, doesn't mean it's easy. Right. Yeah. I don't know. Pregnancy just wasn't my favorite. Okay. And then postpartum, like everything was, I had a great labor and delivery, honestly, like no complications, healthy baby, healthy mom, but mentally postpartum really fucked with me. Yeah. I struggled with postpartum depression and don't think I fully realized how dark it was or how much I was struggling until I was on like the other side right. of it. Yeah. So around month like eight was when things started to positively shift for me. Okay. And I think once I came out of it, I was like, wow, you yeah. were a shell of yourself for a long time there, girl. Yeah. But while it can be so hard and mentally and physically exhausting, mm-hmm. It is simultaneously the best thing that has ever happened to me. Yeah. And I feel like I was meant to be a mom. And it's, I, I don't feel weird saying this, but it's kind of a interesting emotion to have and discuss where I'm like, I am the most confident. The thing I'm the most confident about in life is how I mother. Okay. And I'm That's like amazing. so proud of myself and I love doing it. And I'm like, this is what I was meant to do hands down. But it's still really fucking hard. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. And all that to be said, I hold so many privileges that make my experience easier than so many. Mm -hmm. And that doesn't take away from struggles I have. But that does for me open my eyes to how difficult this is for so many people who don't hold these privileges that I have, which is why I'm also like very, very, very pro making sure that we have legislation that allows yes. women to do what they want to do. I agree with that also. Well, this is late, but I was going to tell everybody. Yeah, to today, vote, go vote. Yeah. It's a little bit late for that, but um, same. Yeah, and I was, and then I had a kid, and I'm like, oh, times yeah, 100. right. Because right. if I didn't want this, and this was all happening. Right. Yeah. No, I I completely agree. Yeah. Wow, that's amazing. How old is Liam now? 17 months. 17 months. It's it's like he's almost to the best face. Yeah, he is just like he t- he's really verbal. Yeah, really verbal. And now he was a little delayed on the physical side, but now he's confidently walking. OK, and he's so verbal and so fun. And like, I just look at him and I'm like, you're my best fucking friend. Like, how fun is this? Yeah, I just it is hard because with work, I love my work so much and yeah. I want to do as much as possible and. I feel like there's a lot of momentum right now with my career and I want to lean in and do as much as I humanly possibly can. Yeah. But simultaneously, everything is now, well, do I want to do that or do I want to spend time with him? Right. So the bar is much higher for like my threshold of bullshit I put up with. Right. I'm like, no, I don't want to do that. I'd, I'd rather be with him. Yeah. Which also I think like I was listening to your podcast and I was, you were talking about like saying yes. You, you were reading a book where you were saying like you were saying yes to everything, yeah. but it's really more about like picking and choosing. Yeah. And I, but I feel like have like having a reason to say it no to totally things changes your priorities and changes your priorities and also like can help you really focus on the things in your career that you actually totally. want to do mm-hmm. instead of feeling like you have to do or yeah. whatever. Puts everything in perspective. Totally. Wow. Yeah. That's amazing. It is. It's, it's like earth shattering in the best way. Yeah. And the hardest way. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Are you going to put him in school? Do you know? Yeah. I haven't gotten that. I mean, yes, he will be going well, to school. Well, I mean, like, it, like, because yeah, yeah, yeah. I know, like, the school that I taught at started at two. Right. A twos program. Right. So technically, <clears throat> he would be in a twos program starting this upcoming fall. Okay. When's his birthday? May 21st. Nice. What I will say is 
New York City twos programs mm-hmm. in my neighborhood. Mm-hmm. I looked at a twos program. I was just curious. Like yeah. it's around the block. I'm like, oh, let me see. I'll mm-hmm. call. Right. And I wasn't really looking. I was just wondering the price. I'm basically sending this kid to college. Yeah. I don't know what they're teaching him. Totally. Three hours a day, three days a week, and we're hitting almost 30K. Yeah, it's insane. What is, what, you, I'm sorry. Right. How? So I, we also were trying to move. So like, I'm not even really entertaining the whole concept because yeah. I'm hoping that we'll be in the suburbs by then. Right. And I'd actually love to talk to you about this is like, I'm very big on, I want to make sure that I'm providing him with opportunities for him to pick his own hobbies. Okay. Because I think so much is in the past, but also like just in general, it's really easy to project your interests onto your children. Mm -hmm. So I was a lifelong athlete, as was my husband. We both played college sports. So like, obviously everyone's like, oh, Liam's going to be this great athlete. I'm like, but what if he doesn't want to play sports? Like, that's fine. Mm -hmm. So yes, I have him in like, I mean, we go to soccer class, we go to swim class and that stuff, but we also go to music class, we go to art class. Right. Books galore in our household. Yes. So he's, very socialized. Right. And I think that that's like the main thing that they're learning in the twos class Agreed. anyway. So it's not like he's missing. Yeah. He'll be missing right. anything. My mom crazy. sent me a video. She's taking care of him right now of him in music class yesterday, like holding hands with this little boy walking around. And I cried on the planks. I was like, he is fully going to have this experience in the world without me yeah. at some point in his life. Yeah. It's turning into that as he's growing up. And yeah. that's just wild to me. It's crazy. Crazy. Motherhood. Crazy. Crazy. Do you want to have kids? Yes. I'm very excited to have kids. You'll be a great mom. Um, Thanks. I hope. I think you will. I mean, it's like, you don't really know, but I also feel like all me and my friends are kind of in the same page and like kind of doing the same thing right now. So we'll be able to like navigate it together. Which but is so helpful. Yeah. Really, really helpful. But it's nice to talk to people. Like like I said, you're like the first person on here who is kind I'm of in happy to help. that phase. And I will be here for when you hopefully go through it. I will say like that is something I feel really proud of, of like the, we talk about the shift of my content and like yeah. involvement and stuff. I share a lot about motherhood and postpartum and all of that. And I was very hesitant when I got pregnant. I kept being like, I don't want this to become like some mommy blogger. I'm not a mommy blogger. I, yes, I was going to ask about this. Yeah. How do you it's so balance confusing. that? It's so And confusing. you don't show his Yeah, face. I don't show my son's face. Okay. Correct. So, and do you just like, what? how do you balance it? Because like, I'm, I just don't even know. It's so I probably know. hard. It's hard. Yeah. What I try to do is... To share what I'm experiencing and what right. I'm going through. And sometimes that's motherhood related. Sometimes it's work related. Right. Sometimes it's anxiety related. And that's kind of always been my method with my account. Yeah. And with that, I think I've built a really engaged and supportive community. Yeah. And so I just try to continue to do that. Because okay. I think also anytime you try to force content for what others want, it never seems genuine because it's right. not. And right. like, Quite honestly, also, we talk about priorities. I don't have the time to be creating content that I'm not lit up by. Totally. And I'm not interested in doing it. Yeah. So for me, it's really just like sharing what I'm experiencing. And I try to acknowledge that like, it's also confusing. It would be easier if like all of my community was a mom or all of my community wasn't. Totally. But like a lot are first time or yeah. veteran whatever mothers and then a lot are like young 20 year olds right. who are like living in the city right but i will and say a lot are like where's the food <laughs> right but they actually <laughs> message me so much but i also but think it's nice to see like the growth right i'm yeah. a full first of all there's this there's so much to unpack here one you get to decide who you follow so like if my right. content isn't for you anymore totally god bless yeah. love you good feelings it was here's fun. the door it was yeah. fun yeah. maybe i'll see you next time maybe right. i won't that's fine i wish you all the best but also like you don't you can't decide as a creator to be relatable because you're never going to relate to everyone right and you're going to relate to certain people about certain things yeah. and that's up to the consumer to decide totally. whether you are relatable to them or not that doesn't mean that you only have to follow relatable people you yeah. can choose right. you might want people to show you a different aspect of life or geography or upbringing or right. whatever so i will it, it's interesting for like some of my younger 
community members when they message me and they're like, I am so fucking far away from having a kid, but for some reason this interests me so much. Yeah. They're like, I just watched your full labor and like and delivery packing list like for right. the hospital. Why? Right. I don't know. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so I don't know. It, it's a lot, but I try for me, I am really proud of the community I've built online, especially around this topic of sharing my honest truth about motherhood. Yeah. And my community who's been there, I owe them everything. And I'm so grateful for them because especially over the past year and a half, they have seen me through my darkest fucking days. Because right. I was sharing like pretty real time. Yeah. And it was clear I was struggling. And that's so helpful for people it's, to see. It, I hope it's helpful. I yeah. know it is based on yeah. messages. It also is really hard to do. Right. I can't yeah. imagine. Yeah. And it also comes with some not so fun like yeah. response. Mm -hmm. But the positives outweighed the negatives totally. for me. And I think with that, it also has made my community so excited about where we are today because yeah. they're like it's kind of like a we did this, right. like we got through this moment because right. they really saw it yeah. through. That's amazing. It's yeah. amazing to build that kind of community. And also like it's probably something that is feels so isolating and the fact that you could be like you could be there for someone even if you don't like outright know that you're doing yeah. it it's just so so much more so much more special and so much more important than like the hateful messages totally. that you get and i mean my dms make me cry in the best way yeah like, some of the stuff that people will tell me like <clears throat> is so Got wrenching yeah. and heartwarming also. Yeah. yeah. But I mean, my whole goal of my platform, and I say this all the time, is to remind people you're not alone. Right. And I think when I was struggling the most in my mid 20s, I felt so isolated and so alone. Mm -hmm. And just like I had everything at a surface level. So mm -hmm. I was like, why am I so anxious and sad and crying and depressed? Right. And why do I feel so lonely in mm -hmm. this city that I have everyone in? Yeah. And once I started talking about that and sharing my struggles and talking about medication and therapy and things I was doing, that's when I really think I built this community. And the messages, not only was it helpful for me to remind other people that they're not alone, but selfishly, the messages I got was like, oh, I'm not alone. Totally. Yeah. 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 It goes both, it goes both ways. ways. And that's what makes it the community. Right. And I think it's important to just remember that like everyone's going through something. Yeah. You know, you never fucking know what's happening. Right. Totally. Wow. Well, I'm happy to be part of your community <laughs> now. I'm and I'm so happy, happy to have, have you here. <laughs> we could do a little story time. Do you want to? So we do story time. People call in. They <laughs> yeah, tell me what's going on in their lives. And we try to help. Okay. Or, you know, just listen. Just yeah, listen yeah. and yeah. talk about what they are going through. Perfect. Hi, Kelsey. Love the podcast. Um, I was wondering, what advice would you give for someone who is struggling to feel a sense of belonging anywhere, or rather someone who doesn't feel a sense of belonging really anywhere and kind of feels like an outsider all the time? And yes, that someone is, is me. Um, we love your advice. Love you. Thanks. That's literally what we were I was just, just talking say, about. Did you really flick and click, Marshall? <laughs> Marshall, you <laughs> knew. <laughs> no, that was very fitting, caller. That that is crazy. You were just talking about this. Yeah. What when you were feeling that way in your mid twenties? What like? I think helped a speaking your emotions as much as you can. Mm -hmm. So whether that's to yourself in the form of journaling, I'm a big big journaling advocate and it doesn't need to be this like in-depth practice where you have this beautiful journal and like all these prompts right. you literally can just write out your thoughts right i think it's really helpful to get your thoughts out of the four walls of your own brain mm -hmm. and to reflect on later in life like i love looking at my yeah. journals from like five years ago yes but also i mean if you have someone in your life that you feel like you can express these things to because i know like for me during this time of my life i had a group of friends and they i don't think ever were aware of what i was feeling yeah until i really sat down and like expressed my emotions yeah i am very pro therapy I know that it's a privilege, but in today's world, I do think they're making more affordable and yep. accessible and attainable options. But 
I mean, really, it's remembering like no matter what you, you like, I totally understand how it's easy to feel like you are alone. And it's mm-hmm. like, no, there's no way someone else is experiencing this. There's no way someone else feels this way. I know I'm alone. You are not alone. You, I completely agree. And like, there are people out there who love you and care for you and want to help you. Mm-hmm. And so I think the first step is letting those people help. Yeah. And not, I always felt like I would like, just like no one would ever get it. Right. And if I say it, I'm going to sound crazy and they're not going to want to be my friend or they're mm-hmm. not even like telling my parents certain things. Yeah. Like I was always worried, but then I, and then I would just crack and then mm-hmm. I'd realize that I'm not alone. Yeah. But also like journaling and stuff shows that your relate, how important your relationship with yourself is. And like, even if you feel like you can't talk, there's not someone you know, you you still have yourself. And like, I feel like it's so important to remember that and like acknowledging your feelings because you are human and not just like putting them aside. Like you have to give yourself the amount of grace that you would give someone that came to you. And I feel like that would, that really helps you feel like you're not as isolated. And if you just like write things out, talk about them, even like to yourself, literally just talk, like just like voice what you're going through. It, so many times when I do that, I'm like, oh, I'm not as like, this isn't as crazy as I actually think it is. Mm-hmm. Like it's, this is a solvable thing or this is normal or whatever it is. Like it's not as wild and like I'm not as isolated as I feel like yeah. I am. I also think if you're looking for a like social network, maybe like I know that's tied in with the idea of belonging, right? figuring out your hobbies and then finding communities around those things yeah so like i don't know if you do this but like for for me even i feel like there's a sense of isolation and loneliness especially around motherhood so i have a facebook group that's like right i don't even really promote it much at all right because i want to keep it not that i want to keep it close knit but i just don't want to like make it a thing that i'm blasting 24 7 yeah but like people will go and meet up from that. Like yeah. Facebook groups still are a very big, like yes. they are a thing. I know, they really are. Or even events, if you have favorite creators who do that. Like I yeah. do New York City meetups. We're trying to plan an LA one. And I, all like after them, I get messages from girls who are like, we all exchanged numbers because we all came alone. Right. Like, that is that's literally amazing. the point of this. Yeah. Like, that's why we have social media to yeah. connect. Right. And even if it's a virtual thing, like I just feel think it's important to look into or if it's a workout event at a studio you love yeah or an art class right you know finding things that are social around hobbies you love so that hopefully you can meet other people with similar interests totally and it might be seem scary to like have to go to those things alone and whatnot but like doing i talked about this in another episode but like doing those scary things is like the only way that you grow Mm -hmm. and it's totally it won't it's not as scary once you're in it and doing it and at least like you can be proud of yourself that you went and you met someone you talked to one person you know what i mean so absolutely yeah we're i mean you look at you have a community right here yeah you're not we're isolated yeah so don't don't we got you you know and then there's sure there's another circular listening too that you could talk to so yeah should we do one more click it and click it here we go Hey, Kelsey. My name's Ethan. Our my best friend and I are 22. Calling. He lives in LA and he works full time. I live in Orange County and I have a few jobs and I'm finishing up college. We were wondering how would you go about making new friends or more friends and maybe having more fun or being more social. We used to be super social back in the day <laughs> uh, when we were a little bit younger. Nowadays, we're just really focused on financial stability and working hard towards our financial goals and such. And we don't really like hanging out with our coworkers because all they do is talk about work. And we do have fun on our own, but we spend most of our hobbies doing things by ourselves, which do make us happy. But we're (laughs) worried that we're becoming just stale and business focused and boring adults too quickly. So any advice for that? Thanks. Bye. Wow. I feel like this is connected. These are all it's connected all kind to literally of connected. what we're finishing. Yeah. yeah. I have a few thoughts. Okay. I can actually relate to this because okay. I lately, especially after having a kid, I am like, am I boring? Mm-hmm. 
And then I remember, no, I'm doing what I fucking want to do. Right. So sometimes I think we put this, I'm not saying to hermit yourself and like not have an outside life of yes. your apartment. However, you really have to think about, okay, what do I want? Because right. community is so important. And I definitely think that we need to remain social, especially post COVID yes. like lockdown. There's a lot of fear around leaving and doing social things. And it's easier to just stay at home, but also make sure you're aware of, Am I, is the driving force the fact that I have like FOMO or I think I'm supposed to be doing something Mm -hmm. or because other people are doing it, I need to do it. Mm -hmm. So A, like acknowledge that. Yeah. But B, I mean, you could set like a goal of like, okay, I'm going to do something social once a week. Right. Like, you know, keep it small. Yeah. In terms of like finding those things, it's kind of what we said. Like, I don't know whether it's a trivia night at a bar that's nearby you. Yeah. Or a sports league. Like I know my husband used to like be in sports leagues in the city. Yeah. Like basketball yeah. or like, like kickball. Oh, yeah. That's a big we one. did a kickball yeah. one. Mm-hmm. We did a soccer yeah. one. Yeah. Those are big. Like I do think now workout studios are starting. There's like one specifically in New York, West Village Athletics. That's okay. like really blowing up. Okay. Where they basically like form teams for workouts so you work out with the same people at the same time every week and then they all like go out and get breakfast or coffee and like that i think is a fun way to socialize and meet people yeah for sure i think setting attainable goals for yourself and trying to hold yourself accountable to them yeah i'm gonna try and do one thing next week right i think it's easy for people to get like especially with your first job like your first real job Mm -hmm. it's really easy to like get into the mindset of like I just go to work and I come home and I like don't do anything. Mm -hmm. I'm just doing another on the grind or you know what I mean. But like and people think that they can't do anything else except like stick to that. Yeah. Kind of schedule. But it's really important to do things for yourself. Like like so important social things. And while you like I mean, good for you guys for like, you know, you're you're making money and you're working and all of that that's amazing but like that can't if you feel like that's your only thing and it's make it's draining you it, it's gonna wear you out completely so burnout you have to have real. burnout so real and you have to have stuff for yourself or else you're living for like a job and that's not gonna be filling forever mm-hmm. so like don't I would say, yeah, do try to do one thing a week and just something that you genuinely want to do. You have a friend, you guys are kind of in the same boat. So you guys can find something you want to do together. And like, even if it's just like grabbing a beer together after work and like mm-hmm. talking about anything else, like that in and of itself can just remove you a tiny bit. Even if it's just you two, it, that's fine. You don't need to like, yeah. it doesn't need to be a huge production, but like just doing something for yourself once a week is probably will make you feel more fulfilled, I feel like. Agreed. Yeah. Okay, well, those were our story times. No, we're, well, (laughs) I know you like journaling, but we have our journal time. Every, one of my favorite things to do when I was teaching was like ask kids really simple questions Mm -hmm. and just get their like free formed answer. And so that is like where journal time comes in. And I found, I have like a list of a bunch of like elementary school level like kindergarten level questions. My dream. Yes. We answer them at random and then we hopefully get a little deeper. Okay. So I have some random ones. I don't remember what they are. Am I picking? Yes. There's one. There's one about motherhood in there. Oh. Because. Wouldn't it be crazy if it's this one? I don't think it is that one because I remember (laughs) that it was a sparkly (laughs) one. But there was a question that was like, what do you think it's like to be a parent? And I was like, well, she is. If I could go back in time, I would go. Any Justin time? and Brittany's apartment. <laughs> oh my god! Stop. This is like the. Also, like I'm so not pop culture, so my friends are gonna be like, "What the fuck is wrong with you?" <laughs> is this any time? Any like personal in and literally any time. Okay, I've actually said this before. Okay, and I I actually weirdly referenced this already in this interview. I never met my dad's dad. Okay, and again, I said this. He died when he was around like six. Right, and I think I would just really like to meet him. Yeah, because that's such an important person in a life of someone who's so important to you. Yeah. And like, I feel like when I was a kid, I never fully grasped the idea that he lost his debt. You know what I mean? Right, totally. 
it was always like I never knew him. Right. And then I think as I got older, I was like, wow, dad was really young when yeah. his dad died. Yeah. And like I started hearing stories about like his mom being a single mom and all this stuff. And then also like now that I'm an adult and married, right. I think about if I were in the shoes of his mom, like just all of it. Yeah. I don't know. I'd really like to meet him. Yeah. That's a great so answer. I think that's one I would say. I love that. You know, I was going to say my dad's dad as well. Really? Yeah. He died when I was like three mm. and I don't remember anything about right. him really. And I just wish that I did yeah because my dad will reference him a lot and I right. just don't really know what he's talking, talking about. about and like my dad and I are so similar and I just wonder like how much of us is, is also in my grandpa mm -hmm. so I would I would say the same thing yeah it's it's really wild yeah yeah, yeah it's crazy to think about I mean it's, six it's, it's really yeah, young that's yeah super young. he would have been alive in today's world it was congestional heart failure oh wow um, I mean he was sick for a while but mm -hmm. it was strep that eventually led to it like what happened and I think in today's world they would have had medicine yeah to help him yeah but, yeah wow. it's young yeah you want to do one more? yeah of course Sparkler. I, I think that it actually like, is it. What if it is? I think it is, but I kind of already asked you it, so it might defeat the purpose. It is. What is the most surprising thing about motherhood? I'll say something else. Okay. Like, what were you just like, like legitimately, like not expecting at all? Whether it's like how you interact with your son, or I literally want to eat him. Okay. Okay. Like I want to eat his face. Yeah. Like physically have to hold myself back from biting him. And I'm not kidding. Like okay. physically have to hold myself back. Right. His He also has like the most luscious cheeks. Okay. And I'm like. like right. It's literally that teeth clenching, like squeeze yeah. your hands. I yeah. have to fight myself. Right. From eating you. Okay. Yeah. I mean that. I love that answer. So you were not expecting to feel that physical urge to bite your son. I guess when, actually maybe I was <laughs> expecting it because I kind of feel it with my dog too. Oh my God. I'm like, yeah. Ugh. Yeah. Yeah. Cute aggression. It's, yeah, it's a no, thing. No, it is totally a thing. So maybe that. Okay. Oh, I, okay. This is like dark. Something I was not prepared for. Okay. My postpartum anxiety came out in intrusive thoughts. Okay. So. Did you, and you didn't have them. Like you, never had okay. intrusive thoughts before. Okay. No. An anxious person never mm -hmm. like saw these things happening. Right. So I would like straight up have not like hallucinations, but I would literally like, I mean, in the middle of the night, I'd wake up stripping the sheets, sc screaming, convinced that I had like m left my child in oh the bed God. and like that he was like being suffocated. Oh my God. And he didn't sleep with us. So right. I'm like, I don't know how he right. slept in a bassinet next to me. And like, this is, this is dark, but I share it in the most honest and like real way I can, because I think that a lot of women experience this and they don't hear people talking about it and they feel so terrified for themselves. So yeah. that's why I say it so bluntly. Yeah. It, I'm not saying it lightly, I swear, but also like if I was walking through a door frame before I walked through, I'd be like, and I'd see this vision of me like smashing his head mm -hmm. in the door frame or mm -hmm. like against our island table or dropping him on the wooden floor Yeah, or like. I actually had, I had them very badly early postpartum and then I didn't have them at all. And then I had one recently this summer where we were like at this, at our beach club and it's like on the bay. So there's like water kind of, and he was obsessed with looking at the water and I was holding him and I was like, what if I just threw him over? Yeah. Like that's so, yeah. there's no desire to no, want no, to no. do that. No, I, I, I know. That, but it's yeah. like, what if I what did? It? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that fucking terrified me. Yeah. Yeah. So that was not. I equate it to Final Destination. I don't know if you watched those yes. movies when you were little. Yes. Yeah. I haven't been on a roller coaster since. Yeah, I hate roller three, coasters. Final Destination. Three. Um, can't drive behind a truck with wooden logs. Oh, me either. Yeah. Oh, tanning the, bed. Yeah. No. The first Couldn't. drive with my child. Yeah. Like how, I st now I'm better. Right. But the first few months. Do you drive? Well, do you guys drive to New Jersey? We would drive to the shore. Okay, yeah. yeah. And my husband would drive, and I'd sit in the back with him. Our okay. child, yeah, and I would be silent the entire time with my head between my knees, like, and I didn't even want to say anything to my husband because I didn't want him to start thinking to start about thinking it, that, yeah. And I felt like if I said it, then something would happen. Oh my god, totally! So I'd be yeah. silent, and mm -hmm. then we'd finally get there, and I'd be like, oh, yeah, thank yeah, God. yeah, wow. And that just started. That just happened after. I was like right away. Okay. Yeah, but right it after never that happened baby before. Left my body. No, okay. I never had them before. Interesting. But now every once in a while I have them where like if I'm on a balcony, I'm like, yeah. what if I just... Yeah. 
I'm not thinking like I want no, to. I, but. To- I mean, I suffer pretty badly from them. Okay, so I know it's, yeah. it's, I didn't actually realize it was a thing until like way later on in life. Yeah. Like, that it, like I thought it was like a very normal thing that was thing happening that in my brain. does it. Yeah. Like Which it's just I, a fire. I'm like, what if I just. Oh my God. Yeah. Put my hand in there. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, like I like literally when we were doing this, my fiance texted me and for some reason I was like, something happened to the dog. Oh, like yeah. what if yeah, oh like, he just texted me saying that this yeah. this and this happened and then he's all he said was hi hi and I'm like okay you should probably relax a little bit yeah but you know I get it it's a scary place sometimes between these two ears yeah it really it gets a little dark in there for sure can I ask you one question yeah are you ever like I'd be so afraid to let someone in my head uh, like yeah. would you give people free access to your brain yeah. no no it's I wouldn't I don't want someone. I don't want to worry anyone because yeah. I've got I've got a lot of control about what's happening up here. Like I'm I'm like I'm able to control. I'm not scared of it. Okay, but I don't. I think someone else might be. Oh, someone would be terrified yeah. to live in. My yeah, brain. but I don't. But I don't want them to be scared because I'm like I've got mm. it under control. We're good here. We've been dealing with this for a while. Yeah, totally got it under control. But like you don't need to get involved. <laughs> I feel you. One of my friends once was like, "Tell me, I want to know what you're thinking throughout the day," and I was like, "Okay." So I started telling her like. I'm worried that that's going to fall on our heads yeah. and kill us. And she was like, you ha-, like I told her like three things. And she was like, I actually am going to ask you. We're to done stop. here. Thanks. Yeah. I actually do that with my husband when it comes to parenting. Okay. We'll be walking around and I'm like, I'm just going to unload everything that's happening in my brain so right. you can get a, a very first row seat yeah. <laughs> at being a mom. Right. And I'm like, just list off I actually did it in one of my episodes I just listed off like the constant stream that's happening in my brain and I made it into a TikTok sound and it yeah. was everyone was like holy shit this is me all day long wow and I do think it's helpful to do if you're a parent listening and if you're the like primary caregiver okay because sometimes the other person just isn't aware of the mental right. load that's right. a whole other conversation yes but it gives them a look yeah and maybe you can figure out from that what they can take ownership of totally yeah yeah. That's a great tip. All right. Well, I mean, we do usually leave on a word of wisdom, and I feel like that oh, was a great okay, word of yeah. wisdom. Do I you just, have another one that you want to share? I would say everything is temporary. Like, no matter how down you're feeling and how dark your times are right now, it is it is temporary, everything. Yeah. And there's always light at the end. Love that. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you for coming on. This is so fun. This was great. So much fun. Thank you all for listening. And we'll see you next time. I never know how to say goodbye, but bye. I love you guys. <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much. Of course. Thank you. note that this episode may contain paid endorsements and advertisements for products and services. Individuals on the show may have a direct or indirect financial interest in products or services referred to in this episode.